In this video, we will study the pathological features of rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Firstly, in rheumatoid arthritis, the gross features are edema and thickening of synovium. You know that synovium is the membrane that lines the joint cavity. And in rheumatoid arthritis, the synovium becomes inflamed, edematous and thickened. Secondly, these changes of rheumatoid arthritis usually occur at the level of small joints of hands, feet, wrist and elbows. And the large joints such as hip joints and vertebral joints are usually less affected. So rheumatoid arthritis commonly affects small joints. Thirdly, in some patients of rheumatoid arthritis, you can find some small subcutaneous nodules on their skin that are called subcutaneous rheumatoid nodules. So these are the gross features of rheumatoid arthritis. Now for microscopic features, you know that rheumatoid arthritis has a complex pathophysiology. And if we summarize this pathophysiology into one single line, then this will help you to remember the microscopic features. So the keyword phrase to focus is, in rheumatoid arthritis, the inflammatory cells cause activation of angiogenesis, synovium and osteoclasts. Inflammatory cells cause activation of angiogenesis, synovium and osteoclasts. The first keyword is inflammatory cells. So you will see chronic inflammatory cells that are lymphocytes, macrophages and plasma cells. And these lymphocytes can also form lymphoid follicles. Secondly, in addition to the chronic inflammatory cells, you can also find acute inflammatory cells that are neutrophils. The second keyword is activation of angiogenesis. So you can see increased vascularity in the form of increased number of blood vessels. And along with this increased number of blood vessels, you will also see increased number of fibroblasts. You know that this increased amount of fibroblasts and blood vessels is called granulation tissue. So here you can also see this granulation tissue in form of increased vascularity and fibroblasts. Now the third keyword is activation of synovium. So you will see synovial cell hyperplasia and synovial proliferation that is increased quantity of synovial matrix. So you will see both synovial cell hyperplasia and proliferation. The fourth keyword is activation of osteoclasts. So you will see multinucleated giant osteoclasts that causes degradation of bone at joints. Now this increased quantity of synovial cells and synovial matrix along with this inflammatory cells and fibrovascular tissue is together known as PANUS. So what is PANUS? PANUS is a combination of increased synovial matrix along with inflammatory cells and fibrovascular tissue. Now gradually with time, this PANUS tissue becomes more fibrotic and calcified. And when this PANUS becomes more fibrotic and calcified, it is known as ankylosis. So PANUS can eventually turn into ankylosis. So overall, let's revise the microscopic features. You see lymphocytes, macrophages and plasma cells. You also see neutrophils. You see synovial cell hyperplasia and proliferation. You see increased fibrovascular tissue. And you see increased number of multinucleated osteoclasts. Now let's come to the morphological features of osteoarthritis. You know that osteoarthritis means degeneration of cartilage and bone at the level of joints. But this degeneration that occurs in osteoarthritis differs from that of rheumatoid arthritis in a way that it usually does not involve immune system or inflammatory cells and it is not characterized by proliferation of synovial cells and synovial matrix. So you usually don't see any panis. Now let's translate these keywords into a microscopic picture. Firstly, there is degeneration of cartilage. And how will you see this degeneration of cartilage? This degeneration of cartilage is visible as cleavages and clefts at the level of articular surfaces. Secondly, as the cartilage is being degenerated, some broken pieces of articular cartilage and bone become dispersed or dislodged in the joint cavity. Such dislodged pieces of cartilage and bone in joint cavity are called loose bodies or joint mice. Thirdly, as the articular cartilage is being degenerated, as you can see here in this diagram, this is the normal articular cartilage. If this is being degenerated, then the bony surfaces will come in friction with each other. This friction caused by bone surfaces against each other will turn the surfaces of bone that resemble like a polished ivory. These bone surfaces that resemble a polished ivory is known as bone hibernation. So overall due to the degeneration of cartilage in osteoarthritis, you see cleavages and clefts at articular surfaces, you see loose bodies or joint mice and you see bony hibernation. Now secondly, as the bone is also being degenerated in osteoarthritis, so due to the degeneration of bone, you will see microcysts and microfractures in bone. Secondly, in response to this degeneration of bone, some outgrowths or bone and cartilage develop at the margins of particular surfaces. Such outgrowths that are usually made up of bone are known as osteophytes or bony spurs. So you can see here in this diagram that at the margins of these bony surfaces, there are some outgrowths that are called bony spurs. So overall, due to the degeneration of bone, you see microcysts and microfractures 
and you see outgrowths at the margin of articular surfaces that are called osteophytes and bony spurs. This concludes the pathology of rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis.